sing it to him with all of our heart. thing that ever got a hold of you today. with all your heart. thing we could ever think about. The greatest thing we could ever tell anybody about is the lovely Lord Jesus. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? What a privilege. January the 8th, 2023. I never, never in my wildest dream thought we'd be here now. But we are. And we're still fighting. We're still winning. We're still, we're still fighting and hating the devil every day of our life, aren't we? I hate him, don't you? Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord one more good hand half of praise this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad to have you in the service with us today. If we have any visitors, we want to say we welcome you. Glad to have you here. All of our streamers, we want to say God bless our streamers. Give those folks a nice hand this morning, if you will. Before we go any further, this was found out in the lobby. It looks like a prayer cloth with a scripture. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth in a little plastic folder like. If you lost that and want to pick it up, it'll be right here on the, on the Bible stand. You can get that after, after service today. Uh, we're going to look at our prayer request. Brother Robert Marrero sent us a text early this morning. Really needs our, our prayers. He's suffering uh, with asthma attacks, trying to minister to his to his group there in New York and uh, doesn't have a lot of help uh, preaching wise so he's asking that we would just pray that the Lord would would strengthen him so that he can be useful to his congregation and that's, that's a true shepherd wanting to be healed for the sake of his assembly. I appreciate that don't you? So we want to pre, uh, appreciate and say that we love Brother Robert Marrero and the folks there in New York and just pray that God would, would touch our brother's body. I want to remember Chris Connolly in prayer that's the couple that drives over from Hendersonville, North Carolina. He's been sick in body, needs, needs our prayers today. They're not able to be in service, so we want to remember Chris today as we pray that God would be mindful of him. I want to remember Sister Rayleigh Shepherd in prayer. She's still in the hospital with congestive heart failure and looking at a probable heart catheterization this week, so we want to remember Sister Rayleigh as we pray that the Lord would touch her. Sister Linda Jablonski says, Dear church family, I would like for you to pray for Sister Yvetta Collins. 
She's down in her back, and Brother Howard is very uh, sore and in a lot of pain from his surgery. Please also remember my mom, Sister Joanne Tessa, in prayer. We want to commit all those folks to the Lord this morning. Certainly appreciate each and every one of them. Please pray for Sarah Baker has strep throat. We want to remember her as we pray today. God will be mindful of her. Please pray for Holly Keplinger. She is in severe pain and cannot sleep. Uh, pray that the doctors can figure out some relief for her. So we certainly want to remember Sister Holly that the Lord would give her healing in her body. Sister Linda Phillips offers this testimony. We want to give a praise report for Brother Jerry. He was really sick on Friday. Brother Donnie prayed for him over the phone, and by Saturday he was so much better. They want to say praise the Lord for that. So thank God for that testimony. Sister Sandy Baggett says, turns in a prayer request for her brother, Tony Garland, sick, needs a healing touch from the Lord. So let's remember him in prayer as we pray today. Let me make this announcement. Now this is Brother Ryan Kennedy sent us this. Brother Eugene's memorial service will be 11423 next Saturday at 2 p.m. here. Next Saturday, 2 p.m. here at Holiday Inn. I'm right on it. Okay, so you remember that. That'll be, we'll make it, mention that again, Lord willing, on Wednesday night. But that'll be next Saturday at 2 o'clock for the Eugene Kennedy's memorial service. So we want to be here to honor our brother, the great hero of the faith. He never lost faith. Whatever took him out of this world, it was only by the permissive will of God. And we know that right now, I wonder what he's doing right now. I'd say him, Jim Babs had a good conversation. So we thank God for those that have left us. They're in a much better place. And it's our duty and our call to go to them because they can't come to us, but we can go to them, right? All the unspoken prayer requests this morning, if you have a need, we just want to commit all these things unto the Lord. Could we stand together? Brother Skip Walker, if you'd come this morning, brother, take us to the Lord in prayer. Let's sing that little chorus one more time. How great thou art. Do you love him better than everything in this world? Yeah. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. such a touch that I need, my family needs, and I believe we can get it right here today. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you see the prayer request that went forth, Lord. It's, it's always pain and agony in this life, but, but you're always a healer, and you're always with her, with us, Lord, with the bride. And God, we're just asking you now to touch each one who, who turned in a prayer request. Help each one, Father God. We know there's prayers going forth, and, and we know, Lord, that Satan wants to stop our prayer life. That's his. That's one of his main objectives, and he really works on me that way. But we know, God, that you're able to, to touch us right here in this service this morning. A word can come forth that's, that's maybe Brother Joe's not even thought about that would go right to our heart and help us, Lord. The many requests are so, so serious. Most of them, Lord, we ask you to touch each one. Ask you to be with the people who's not here today, Lord, and who's on the internet. Draw us near unto you. Reveal your word to us. Give us a touch, Lord, as we greatly need. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing a little song this morning. Where's Brother Joel Brown at? He's here somewhere. I saw him come in, I think. Get your hide up here. 
Amen. I like that guy, don't you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nobody can sing this song like him, but we're going to help him. Oh, happy day. It's a happy day. The world don't know what happiness is. They think they do. We really know what happiness is in the Lord, right? Along with all your troubles, all your problems, you still got the joy of the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Give him one more good hand clap of praise. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy, happy day. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When my Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus was.
this morning. Hallelujah. You can be seated. The Lord bless you. We got some good singing for you today. Sister Jessica's going to come. Sister uh, Lindsay's going to come. And then Brother Joel Brown's going to come and sing. We got three good songs, and I believe you're going to enjoy every one of them. Give our singers a nice hand as they come to sing for you.
it's not your fault I won't blame you even though you didn't make the mountain move you must have known that in time I'd get so much closer to you as I Because you gave me strength when I was weak Because you never lost your faith in me I love you more than I did before Cause when I needed you You were there to pull me through I love you Though I don't understand your will Because you've been so faithful to me, Lord I love you more Without some rain Nothing would grow Without some Praise the Lord. Did y'all know we're getting ready for a body change? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. It don't work that way. We're getting ready for a body change. Yeah. Come on, word of life. The prophet, you know, someone asked him the question, you know, please explain the mystery of the translation of the bride. He goes and talks about Sarah and Abraham, how he said before that promised son could come, they had to have a body change. Then he goes on to talk about how the word in you, that word that's coming will materialize around the word that's already in you. My. So that's what we're getting ready. You say, well, Brother Joel, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how weary and blue I am. You're still promised a body change. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I don't know about y'all, but I believe these things we've been hearing. I believe these things that I read. I'm going to take them on one day. Let's go, son. Let me shut up. Praise God. God's good to us, isn't he?
You don't have to worry And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Troubles they don't last always For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh i know that i can take it with him i know i will stand no matter what may come my way my life is in his hands with Jesus I can take it with him I know I will stand no matter what may come my way my life is in his hands So when your tests and trials They seem to get you down And all your friends and loved ones Are nowhere to be found Remember there's a friend in Jesus Who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken listen just lift your hands and say oh I know that I can take it I know I know I know that I can say no matter what may come my way my life is in his hands with jesus i can take it with him i know i can stand no matter what may come my life is in his hand oh i know that i can take it is in his hand. Nope. No matter what gets in your way. Amen. read a quote before I come out here, Brother Andrew Glover had, had posted what Brother Branham said in 56, and God hath provided a way. He said, when you look at all the, what they went through in the Old Testament, they escaped the edge of the sword, their dead was raised. He said, you can do that too if you take the same road. He said, that was, he said you said that was the Bible way. That's what they did in the Bible. Brother Bram said, we're still in the Bible way. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
Why did he say pray and read your Bible every day? Because you're in the Bible way. You are the living Bible, as you're going to find out today. If you've never, ever heard how much of the Bible you are, after today, you have no excuse. Because I have got bruises and stripes. and Man, I have fell short. So, don't get mad at the messenger. <laughs> told Brother Jimmy a while ago, and I told Brother Tim Murray Friday night, I said, Brother Donnie heard I was preaching, so he went to Gatlinburg. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he'd have took me with him. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're glad to see Brother Donnie get some rest. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's worked and worked and worked. He's put in a lot of time over there. And, um, he might not tell you, but he's getting old. I watched him walk out the other day, and I thought, who is that man? It didn't look like the same guy that stood up here 30 years ago. But that, for him, it's a labor of love. Look, I go, I don't, I've done not near, near as much work over there as everybody else. Uh, but I go over there, I see them brothers working. I'm sorry if I'm taking up your my preaching time. I'll cut it short. I always do anyway. So, watch them brothers work, and you can t- tell by the spirit, their attitude, that they love what they're doing. You know, I've often thought <clears throat> people that would say, "I can't believe you're doing this. You're building this. You're doing that, and all that." Everybody knows that that knows Brother Donnie. Brother Donnie never does anything until he's led of the Lord. Because I remember the brothers came to Brother Donnie about 25 years ago to do this, to build this church. And he said they didn't feel the leading of the Lord to do it. So just be careful what you say. When you've got a man of God that is doing something, I promise you he's doing it prayerfully. Prayerfully. And he's doing it for you. He ain't doing it for himself. He, 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 loves his, he loves God's people. <clears throat> so, if you have your Bibles, and you want to turn with me to Mark chapter 16. If anybody sees anything wrong with my suit this morning, my wife tried to dress me, but she didn't. So, I got some looks on the way here. I'm not up on fashion. Sorry. She won't post no pictures of me, though, I guarantee you, with this on. So, anyways, let's go to the work. After he had appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. They didn't believe when he said, we saw him. They didn't believe him. Afterward, he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meat and upbraided him with, for their unbelief. And their hardness of heart, because they believe on they believe not on them that had seen him after he was risen. People are going to see Christ in you. What we're going to talk about today is go tell the world. That's the title. Go tell the world. Because you are the message. You are the message. People are not going to believe you. People are not going to believe you. There's some that will believe you just by watching your life. Your life will bring people into this message without you even opening your mouth. That's the Bible way. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How many is a creature in here today? This message was preached to you or you would have not been here. There's many of you or most of you are here because someone that carried this message, that lived this message, expressed it to you and here you are. And it wasn't a preacher. Many of you are here because someone that wasn't a preacher lived a life in front of you If that seed that was in you 
was never there. That deep calling to the deep on the, that person whose life that influenced you would never influence you. We'll look at that further on, but there has to be a life in there to respond to a life. Does that make sense? You know me, I don't get deep. I'm just real simple. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for another day, Lord. Another day, Lord, to sit around your word. Lord, we know so many times what we've heard, Lord, that this is the house of correction. And Lord, we receive that. But sometimes this is also the house of blessing. This is the house of praise. This is the house of worship. Lord, I hope in today's sermon, Father, even if we get correction, help us to give you praise. Help us to worship. Help us to get blessings, Lord. Lord, it's not always just about coming in here and, and, and making sure that our, our lives are just straight and narrow, Lord. But that's part of it. But it's also sometimes, Lord, it's time to give glory back to you, to give praise and worship back to you because you are the only one that is worthy of that. Amen. May we do that this morning. We invite you, Lord, help me to get out of the way. Lord, as I put these notes together and I sit back there, I study them over and I've studied them again. And getting ready to come out here, it just seems like it all goes blank. Yeah. Ministers here could tell you that that's how it happens. You think you, you have it, how you're going to do it on your notes. And then you walk out and it all goes blank. But Lord, if I have to go blank so you can fill that void, Lord, may it happen. Yeah. May you speak to us this morning, Lord. Lord, anything that would hinder our lives, may we push it out. Any criticism, any, anything, Lord, that any bitterness, Lord, that, that we, if we would come in here and say, give me something, show me something, Lord, I can't give them anything. But, Lord, you can give them you. That's what we're going to look at this morning, how you have given you to us. We thank you for that. Bless your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. As I said, the title that I've given this is Go Tell the World. And Jesus tells him, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wasn't talking just to the disciples. That is your commission. That is my commission. You have a commission. Your commission is not go Sunday and Wednesday and go and listen to the preacher and receive the word. I'm going to read you a quote that I found last night that just totally floored me. What Brother Branham said, our job is. Your job is. <clears throat> but the Bram says in question and answers. Now you remember what I said last Sunday. You are a preacher. Get a pulpit. If you're not, live your sermon. See, that's the best way to do that. Live your sermon. He says it again. If you're a preacher, get a pulpit and go to preaching. If you're not, just live your sermon. Let your life be your pulpit. I don't, I think that takes care of a whole lot, don't you? And you say, Brother Joe, what am I supposed to preach? You know, we, we've got preachers all in the message. We have to put quotations beside the message now because there's so many versions, so many, so many opinions, so many ideas. But there's, God still has some God-called men that are still in the Bible way that are still teaching the message as the seventh-day messenger who brought it. Yeah. You know, the other night, I, I was listening to Brother Jackie saying, I tell you what, Brother Jackie, I don't know where to start about Brother Jackie. Brother Jackie has no doubt led thousands, thousands of people to the Lord and influenced millions. But Brother Jackie... His life has said more than every single sermon he's ever preached. His life has said more than any, one, any, any message that he ever preached. Brother Jackie could never preach one sermon that would be better than the life that he lived. God still has those. What Brother Jackie has done is what you and I are supposed to do. Not going to the jungles where no man's gone. Going places where, and, and take the gospel to people that nobody's ever heard, where they've never heard it. That ain't what our job is. God didn't call us. God didn't call us to go spread the gospel around the world. 
but he called us to spread the gospel. So what is the gospel? The gospel, is, by definition, it is the good news, the glad tidings. That's what we're told. It's, it's the glad tidings, which, you know, in, in the New Testament, you say, we, they want to spread the gospel, the glad tidings of Christ. That was what they were commissioned to do, to testify what Christ has done in your life. But Bram said, question and answer. This is the one that I, I found last night while I was studying. It said, since a child, I've always known that there was a God. And know there was something happening in my life, and that's beyond any question. But let me say this. There will come a message, and there will come a messenger. I believe that if it is to be a man, it'll be somebody after me. And don't let that stumble you. He said, if. If there will come a message after me. If, don't put a period there and stop. We've got too many periods on too many quotes. Don't put a period there and stop. I believe if it's to be a man, it'll be somebody after me. But this message that I'm preaching is the true message of this day, and it's the last message. You see what I'm doing, brother? I'm putting you all in the same place I am. The same place. You are messengers of this same message. There you are, your commission. Go do it. We can dismiss. That's your commission. God's going to hold you to that. You are to preach the same message he preached with your life. You are to be a messenger of this last age message. You've got no excuse. So if if Christ has set his abode in your heart, your your life will scream louder than any words you can say. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing I can say this morning that could say anything louder than the life of Christ in my life, in your life. You can witness to people. You can, you can tell them this. You can tell them that. But they're going to watch your life. When you, be careful when you witness to somebody. Amen. Be careful that whenever you witness to somebody, you're living what you're witnessing to. Right. When you tell people, this is where I go to church, this is my pastor, this is what I believe. I believe in the, in the seventh-day messenger, Malachi 4 and 5. And they go find books. They go find messages. They start streaming your church. And then they watch you at work. They watch your life. Are they seeing what you said you belong to? That's the message of this age. That's the message that we're supposed to be telling other people. How can you bring other people in if you don't preach to them? Now be careful. Everything I say today, don't cross it up with me talking about using your mouth. When you get up in the morning, you should be ready to preach without opening your mouth. My son's over here, and he's, he's finding out ways to mimic me when I get home. He does. He makes fun of me. So, well, he don't make fun of me, but he mimics me. Dad, you do this. I hope every one of y'all get one like him. <clears throat> don't confuse the message with your beliefs do not confuse this message with your beliefs people let their beliefs guide them they love their beliefs they love their opinions of this message. They love their opinions of God. They love their opinions of you. They love their opinions of people. And that what leads them. That what, why do you think we got radicals today in politics and all that radicals? Because they love their beliefs. They love their beliefs. They don't love their God. If you love God, you will let God guide you instead of your beliefs. 
Don't let your beliefs guide you. Your beliefs, many times, beliefs come with the wrong spirit. Ask the Muslims. Comes with the wrong spirit. And they believe 100% that what they're doing is right. They believe it. That's the message. That's the message they're preaching with their lives. Because their beliefs. Don't confuse what you believe as far as I hold these beliefs. You know, in my heart, this is what I believe. I believe, I believe that. Let God guide you. Sometimes your beliefs and your opinions might be wrong. <clears throat> Why do you think Peter cut off the guy's ear? Peter's beliefs. This was God's almighty son right here. And nobody was going to take him. That was Peter's beliefs. This, you're not going to take him. You're not going to kill him. You're not, he, he's not, he don't have to die. That was Peter's beliefs. When he, he told them, you know, that he had to, to die, they didn't want to believe it. But that was their beliefs. God's beliefs, God's way don't line up with our beliefs sometimes. The scripture that I read you this morning. Go into all the world and preach the gospel for years, even as an adult. I thought, before I, before I was called to preach, I thought I had to go find people and witness to them, whether they liked it or not. That's true. That was my belief. I believe that's what I had to do, was to tell people, that, hey, if you heard of Brother Branham, You know, introducing to people this message with that tactic of telling them about Brother Branham has turned many people away. Many people away. What did Brother Branham come to do? Point them to Christ. So we're supposed to be preaching the same message that he preached. Point them to Christ. <clears throat> Being zealous of your beliefs brings wrong spirit many times. Being led by the Holy Spirit will never lead you wrong. Right. Never brings the wrong spirit. <clears throat> Revelation 12, 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of, of, of Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God, before our God, day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. This was the Bible way. They loved not their own lives unto death. That was the Bible way. You say that was in the Bible. That was the martyrs. We're in the Bible way. But I got to looking at that and it said by the word of their testimony. And I looked in John, we've read John 1.1, 1, 1, the beginning of the word was with, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If you look in the Greek, it's the same, in the word of their testimony, and in the word was God, is the same word. So what was the word of their testimony? It was God. What is the word of your testimony? It's God, it always is. He will always be your testimony. That's how you live your life, by God. So the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? But what did, what did the Word, when He became flesh, what did He say? I go away, but I'll come again. And I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. What else did He say? Greater works than this shall you do. You say, I've never raised the dead. You might... You, your life might have raised somebody that was spiritually dead. Right. It's not all about going over to a funeral and standing over a coffin and praying and raising somebody up. You're better off dead in the flesh and have God than to be spiritually dead. It's a greater work to raise somebody that's spiritually dead. It's a greater work. Because the one that's laying here in the coffin, that's not him anyway. That's not her anyway. They've received ultimate healing. But your life, the life you live, 
There's many of you in here could, can get up and testify right now of people coming up to you and asking you, where do you go to church? What do you believe? This, that, different things in your life because they watched you. What did they watch? They watched your sermon. They heard your life. They heard your life. Your life is speaking. If we realize that when we get up in the morning, that when I walk out the door and I go to school and I go to work and I go here and I go there, people are going to hear your life. You think maybe that might make us more weary of how we act, how we treat others, how we treat our family, our wives, our husbands, our kids, because people are watching. Is the life that you're living at home the same life that you're living in front of people? Are you living the same life? Are you preaching at home what you're preaching to people where you work with? Is your wife looking at you as the message being spoke? Is your husband looking at you as the message that's being spoke? A messenger of this message is a 24-7 commission. 365. There's no days off. There's no days off. I got the, when I got the study, I got to, to thinking. Your life is two books. It's two books. We look at it many times as the old man and the new man. God wrote a book about you before the foundation of the world. That book has no beginning and no ending. It always will be there. But Satan's kept a book of you too. When you took your first breath, he began to write him. You say, oh, not me, Brother Joe. I was raised in a Christian home. I've served God all my life. Wow. Let me tell you a little chapter in your book <laughs> that Satan's got. You came into the world speaking lies. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You came from a sin birth because the result, direct result of the fall. Right? All the mistakes and failures in your life. You think God has those in his book? When God looks at Satan's book of your life, it's blank. God can't read Satan's book of you. He can't. He has to look through the blood, right? So when I just read to you that he is the accuser of the brethren day and night, he is going before God with your book in his hand and saying, look at this chapter. Look at this page where he done this, where she done that. God says, that looks like all empty pages to me. I don't see nothing. But that's still your book. I still got your name on it, your earthly name. God's got one with your eternal name on it. Satan don't want to see that one. He's the accuser of the brethren. And so many times in our life, we revert back to a page in Satan's book. We make a mistake. We fall. This book will always be there. You get saved, get the whole field of the Holy Ghost. That book's still there. It's still there. You say, well, I, I, I killed the old man. You're still dragging him around. He might be dead, but you're dragging him around. If y'all if y'all have if you don't understand that, Brother Donnie preached a sermon many years ago by dragging that old Roman soldier around. Right? Go back and listen to it. I can't preach it the way he preached it, but I can tell you you're dragging an old man around. He might be dead, but he stinks. And you know he's there. And sometimes that old stinky nature wants to rise up sometimes. Every once in a while, we put an AED on him, right? We try to resuscitate him. We do. You say, Brother Joe, how do you do that? Well, where should we start? When Satan pulls that little page of you, you remember when you did this? 
And you're like, oh, Lord, I, I forgot I did that. Or you think it was something way back in the day and it was really cool how you did this. And you start talking about the old things you did, how you did that, how you did this, what I did when I was in the bar, when I, did, when, when I was in the world, all the things that you did. And you start talking about them like, you know, hey, the, the devil t- takes a page of your book all the time and gets you to read it all the time. He's a messenger too. He's got a job. He's got a message to preach to you. You think he's going to say, no, they got the Holy Ghost. Can't bother them. He's right, but God allows him. Satan can only do to you what God allows. Don't ever forget that. He don't have free reign at you anytime he wants. Go back and read Job. You'll understand. What will our book read to others? Let's say we're expressing these two books in our life. Those you work with. Which book are they reading? Your wife. Just bring it home. What book is your wife reading about you, husbands? What's she reading? Can she look at your life and say, that lines up right with the message. That lines up with exactly what what the prophet said. His life. The way he treats me. The way he treats the kids. Let me tell you, explain something to you. There's no third book. There's no third book. There's not a book that's your way. So if you was doing something wrong, say if you was a, a deadbeat dad, whatever, I hope nobody here is. You had nothing to do with your kids, nothing to do with your wife. It's just the way you were. And say your pastor called you in and wanted to talk to you about it. And he accused you of living out Satan's book. And you would say, no, there's no way, no way. Well, can you honestly say that you're not living it the way the message, the message that God sent you to live it? No, I can't say that, but I'm not. There's no middle. There's no middle. You're, Brother Branham... Brother Branham said there's only two forces at work in your life. Two. Two. One's of God, one's of hell. So if you're not living, as a husband, if you're not living up to what Brother Branham said to be, or the Bible said to be, what did Jesus say? What What did Paul say? Love your wife as Christ loved the church. The church is God's queen. It's the bride. You get married, you go on your honeymoon, or you going to lay around and tell your wife, hey, go cook me some eggs. Go to the grocery store, go do this. Start, start cleaning up. Not expressing no love. Not expressing anything. What kind of honeymoon would that be? Yeah. Wives. Are you the kind of wife that lines up with this message? Hey, we're all friends and family. Are you the kind of wife that could say, I, I am that Proverbs 31 woman. I am, I am the, the way that Jesus said for the bride to address the groom. It's a love affair. It's a love affair. Can we say that? If you're not, if, if you're the wife and you says, well, he won't do this. He, you know, he's, he's cold on the Lord. He's lukewarm. Okay, you be the message to him. Husband, you be the message to her. You know, I, when I was studying this, I got to thinking of brother, when Brother Branham told that story about that, that drunk sinner that brought his friends home with him. He's going to show them what a wife he had. Made her go in there and cook. Cooked for him. Went there and cooked and he brought it to him. He, they, he threw it on the floor. Started yelling at her, cussing at her. She got down on her hands and knees and began to clean it up. Wanted to give him more. She led him all to the Lord. Without 
opening her mouth. Never opened her mouth. We always have something to say. We want to be heard. Well, my husband won't listen to me. My wife won't listen to me. Show them the message. Live the message in front of them. That is the greatest thing on the face of the earth you could do. This counseling session is free. It won't cost you a dime. It won't cost you a thing. Be the message. That's what you were commissioned to do. But Branham said he was to pass that way. Brother Branham gets a little deep right here. I don't, but he gets a little deep, so you decipher it. And so a good praying wife or mother can do more for the kingdom of God on her knees than sometimes the preacher can do on the platform. That's deep in big words. That's as plain as you can be. I don't like I don't like getting in people's lives. Because it's impossible for me to get in people's lives when I study and not get in my own. Be a perfect testimony of what God speaks through your life. Are we fathers? This is me. This is something that I got to to looking at, and I got a quote here that just really struck me. You know, we're to express the message to our children. And some of you new fathers with new kids, mothers even, but I I want to look at the fathers here because you're the head of the home, right? You're the head of the home. Your wife's the fifth gospel. But are we living the testimony? One thing that always struck me was I would come in here at church and listen to how things about the message. And then I'd go out. You know, my son started getting in teenage years and, and stuff. And I, thought, and I got to thinking, you know, they're understanding things now. And what they're hearing, do they see that in me? Do they see the same message they hear on Wednesday? Let me tell you, I failed so much as a dad. I failed many times. I have sat, just sat by myself many times at work, driving down the road at home, thinking of decisions I made, actions I did with my kids sometimes. I thought, why? Why did I do that? Why did I act that way? Then I got thinking, God's a father too. God's a father. The greatest lesson that we could learn is how many times has he pulled us back in when we've made mistakes, we've made failures as his kids. And I thought, Lord, I want to be the kind of dad. Now, Y'all know me, and I've, I've drove my kids crazy because they're my hobby. I love them. I do. If they're doing something, if they're spitting, I want to watch. That's it. I mean, this right here, I've drove this in crazy, I'm sure. He's free now, so for a little bit. But they're my life. They did things because I, I liked it more than they liked it. Showed their love for me. That's the way God does. God's love for you overlook the things in your life. God lets you do things you want to do sometimes just because you want to do them. Just because he loves you. But are we living the message as far as the message of this last age? Are our kids seeing that? Or are your kids looking to somebody else? Are they looking for that message somewhere else? 
They're going to get a message somewhere. They're going to learn a message from somebody. And let me tell you right now, dads, you better be involved in your kid's life. You're in a society now that teaches them everything under the sun. And you're a bad parent if you don't allow it, according to them. You better be this message right now in this age more than any other age. You're in a society where it's all about me. It's all about me. Society, the people in today's society want whatever anybody can give them. They feel the government owes them. Owes them. They feel the world owes them. And they're going to take. That's the message they're sending out. That's the message the world's receiving and they're giving it. <clears throat> Sometimes we have to live out a page of the old book for God to open our eyes to see the chapter in the new book. Sometimes the old book, Brother Joel, has to come at play in our life. A mistake, a fault, a failure. Sometimes you've got to be flat on your back so you can look up and God's holding this book right above you and says, this is what you should have done the whole time. What is your book reading? Which one are you reading the most? But people today, they want all the attention. The message is no exception. People in the, in the message nowadays, they want attention. Preachers, they want to be in a certain big preacher, big name preacher group. I care less. God didn't call me to be in a big preacher group. I'm a help, all lowercase letters, a help. If, I don't want to be any more than that. I don't want to be no more than that. There might be guys out here that think, you know, they're going to get better recognition if they're with this group of preachers or this group of preachers. Guess what group I'm in? <laughs> biggest name preacher of all. That's what group I'm in, Christ. Amen. That's the biggest name out there. But we want to give glory to men. And, and, and that's, sometimes it's not the preacher's fault. You get people, you can tell when people are stuck on one preacher, they'll follow him everywhere he goes. If he goes on special meetings, they go everywhere. And that's, that's the preacher they quote all the time. They forgot how to, how to spell Brother Branham. And they quote that preacher all the time. Brother so-and-so said this. Brother so-and-so said that. Brother so-and-so said this. What did the Bible say? God gives gifts. He gives talent to people, and people want to steal the glory for it. They want to steal the glory. That's the message they're sending. It's about me. I did this. I did that. What did God do? What message are you giving people that you did so-and-so, you laid hands on so-and-so, you sang this song, you wrote this song, and you want everybody to give you the glory? Who gave you the talent? Who gave you the gift? That's the part we forget. It's given of God. What do you think happened to the children of Israel? They gave glory to an image that they made. They gave glory, God's glory, and God destroyed them. That spirit is still alive. That's, it's, it's not changed. Brother Bram said in 59 when Jesus was here on earth, all things he did, he gave God all the glory. Jesus gave God all the glory. All of it. Not 99%. For God to use you, he has to empty you of you. He has to empty you. You have to be a willing vessel. So it's not you to start with. It's not you to start with. It's, it's God using the vessel. Guys want to get glory for laying hands on somebody and praying for them. They get healed of cancer. I prayed for this person and they got healed. I, 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 I. 
we, it, it's all about God. From, from the very first scripture I read, it's all about God. This message that you were supposed to be the messenger of, it's all about God. But Branham said, the mighty conqueror. But you see, it didn't last because if a man is a conqueror, his objectives must be right and motives must be right. What are your object, motives and objectives? To bring glory to yourself? To let everybody know who you are? To let everybody know what you did? Is that your motive? <clears throat> I'll read a little more. And if you don't play the game fair, you're bound to lose no matter how much conqueror you are. You have to follow the rules of the game to be a winner. If you cheat, you're put out of the game. No matter how good a player you are. So Hitler never followed the rules. What an example. He wanted all the power to himself. He wanted all the glory to himself. Therefore, his objective was wrong. Any man that has those motives and objectives, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Might not want me to read that last part. We'll end up just like Hitler did. That's quite an example. You might say, I am giving God the glory. Is your, wife, is your life expressing that? Is your life expressing, I'm giving God the glory? Is your mouth expressing, I'm giving God the glory? Can people look at you and see your humble spirit, your meek and contrite spirit? Or are they seeing somebody that's boastful, prideful? Boastful, prideful, it's all from hell. You can turn it any way you want to. You're tearing page, You're bringing in, reading pages off your old book. All glory goes to God. Brother Bram said, and how can I overcome? Remember, your life will testify louder than your mouth. What you live will prove to people more than what you say. <clears throat> Sometimes Satan's going to use somebody else's life to influence you. Satan's going to use somebody else's message in their life to influence you. You say, Brother Joe, how does that happen? Go ask somebody that still says they believe this message but don't come to church. Well, because there's too many hypocrites. There's too many hypocrites. You know why they say that? They got nothing else. They got nothing else. So basically, you're allowing Satan to use somebody's message and you're fulfilling it. You're fulfilling it. You're taking the message. They're preaching to you because you're looking at their life. Oh, Lord, they're claiming to be a Christian. They're doing that. They're doing this. And they're preaching. Their life is preaching to you and you're accepting it. You're accepting it. You're fulfilling a page in their book that Satan wrote about them. Why don't you come to church and you influence them with the right message? If they're being a hypocrite, maybe God wants you to come in and you can preach your life to them. Let your life speak to them. I'm, I'm going to wind down here. I didn't say I was closing to wind it down. <clears throat> Influence. Now you know there's somebody that you are influencing. Your life is a written epistle read of all men. Therefore, if your life isn't according to your testimony or your testimony according to your life, rather, you are putting a stumbling block in somebody's way. Or somebody is watching you. Some little child is watching his mother, watching his dad. Your life's going to be contagious one way or the other. It's going to be contagious. If your life is preaching this word, this message, if it's pre preaching the same message when you're by yourself as it is when you're in church, 
you're going to be contagious. But if your life is preaching something different, you're still going to be contagious because people are watching you. Your kids are watching you. They're watching how mom and daddy interact. They're watching how dad treats mom and mom treats dad. There's got to be a life. There has to be a life that speaks. What is, what is that life going to speak? It's going to speak the name of Jesus Christ. Your life preaches Christ. That's what the message is, right? That's what Brother Branham pointed everyone to. That's what his whole, the Malachi 4 and 5 was to come to turn the hearts back, right? For what? The name of Jesus Christ. The name above all names. You know, I was studying this. I got to thinking of Mary and Elizabeth, and I got to thinking how Mary... Gabriel told Mary, you're going to have a child. You know how all that went. Then he tells her to go see Elizabeth. The Bible says she gave salutations unto Elizabeth. It took a prophet to come say what those salutations were. He said that was the first time the name of Jesus Christ was spoke on human lips. I'm going to have a son. But Abraham says, she says, are you, are you married? Oh, no, no. But he says, it's not. It's of God. And Elizabeth catches that and calls her the mother of my Lord. But the thing that got me the most was the name when she spoke it. Life coming to a dead baby. Life. It was the message that Mary brought. And it wasn't, it wasn't the message Mary brought to Elizabeth wasn't about herself. She wasn't telling her this is about me. This is about Jesus. That was the message she conveyed to Elizabeth and life coming to that dead baby. There had to be a life in there for life to come in there. When you express your life to someone else, For them to receive it, they have to have that same life. It may lay dormant for years. It may lay dormant for many years. And that name is spoken to that seed that's in there. They're predestinated. Ordained. When I I think of predestination and, and how long a dormant seed can lay in there, I always think of when Brother Brandon went to the other side and that young woman came up to him. Woman comes up to him and said, Brother Brandon, do you remember me? He said, no, I don't. He said, you baptized me, led me to the Lord when I was 90 years old. 90. But she was predestinated to receive a message. She was predestinated for, to receive a message of the name. That name was, he said, she said, you led me to Christ. To Christ. That was the message he gave her, 90 years old. If that seed had never been in there, if it had never been there, it would have never received that message. Go listen deep, call to the deep. I've said that here a hundred times. It's predestination. Before you can receive. But right when you come in the message, it was something that spoke from here to something that was in there before the foundation of the world. And when you took your first breath of life, when you took your first breath of life, God put it in there. It said, one day somebody's going to have an influence on that seed. There's going to be a messenger come. And that messenger might be Larry Elliott. Let Brother Robin and Larry tell you that story sometime. It's a life. It strikes something. If that seed, there's something. You think there's something about that person. There's something about him that's speaking to me. I've got to talk to him. Why? It's kindred. It's the same name in here that's in there when you didn't realize it was there. We're called to be messengers. 
why it had to be shepherds, the Holy Ghost. The angel of the Lord appeared to Mary and told her she was going to have a baby, knowing no man. Told her about Elizabeth's condition. She went up to the hills of Judea to tell Elizabeth. And when she met Elizabeth, she told her she, she was going to be a mother. She couldn't understand it, knowing no man. But she said, the Holy Spirit overshadowed me. And this holy thing that will be born of me will be called the Son of God. And I'll call his name Jesus. And that the first time the name Jesus was ever spoken on a human lip. A little dead baby in his mother's room leaped for joy and shouted. Brother Branham, another scripture, Brother Branham actually said, John received the Holy Ghost right then. He received the Holy Ghost. So if you ever answer your question, if anybody could be born with the Holy Ghost. And jumped in the womb of a mother and it never had received life yet. The name of Jesus Christ spoke life unto a dead baby. What it ought to do in a church that claims to be born again. The name of Jesus. Just the name Jesus. What it ought to do to a church that says, I'm born again. I got the honor several years ago, and I'm not going to call their name. They wouldn't want me to anyway. I got the honor of baptizing a young sister in our church. She'd been backslid. Her testimony was what her husband had, she wanted. She said, I want what he's got. He's not a preacher. One of the most godliest men in this church. Got one of the sweetest spirits. What she had. For a moment, God closed the, Satan's book and said, it's your time. It's your time. And what was in her husband's life spoke to her and said, I, I want that, what he's got. I want what he's got. That's how a message in our life is preached. He didn't get up every morning and browbeat her and say, you better get saved. He didn't say, you're not seeing our kids till you get saved. He lived. He got up in the morning, went to church, went to work a Christian, came home a Christian, went to bed a Christian, got up the next morning a Christian. Amen. It's as simple as that. Don't complicate it. It's as simple as that. It's a life that's lived. It's a life that you live that people can hear. His life spoke the name of Jesus and there was a seed of life in her that responded. That, that, that might be the way it happened with many of us. The name speaks to us. The woman at the well, Jesus said, I am he that speaks to thee. I am he. She knew one was coming. We've heard, we've heard that one's come. I'm, I'm he. It touched her then. And what did she do? She went and told the whole city. The whole city turned out because of her testimony. So your life might touch one person or many. Your whole school, maybe. Look how this nation was touched recently over an injury on the football field. For the first time on ESPN, you had a guy bowed his head and prayed and said, God's name. And nobody said anything about it. There's power in that name. I don't care whose lips it comes off of. You say, well, they don't belong to the message. There's power in that name. Let's stand together. Sometimes we need to tell the devil. 
You all have heard people say, I'm, I'm not talking to the devil. I'm not wasting my breath on him. Well, Jesus talked to him. You know, you, you, you hear, you know, and a lot of the times it, it, people get that because they say, you know, I don't, uh, you know, you shouldn't confess things. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about confessing. You know, if doctor tells you you have cancer, you say, I'm not confessing that. I totally agree. Don't say that. Don't say it out loud. I got cancer. You know, if you don't want to say it, don't say it. But when God said you could be healed of cancer, why don't you tell him that? Yeah. Why don't you tell him? You know, Satan can put thoughts in your mind, but he can't read your thoughts. That's what Brother Ram said. When you get a thought in here, don't speak it. He can't read your thoughts. But if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to beat cancer. Hey, God's going to save my kid. God's going to save my son. going to save my daughter. He's going to deliver him. Say it out loud. Yes. Let him hear it. Tell him about it. Speak that name to him. Jesus said, greater works than this shall you do. Amen. Let him know. Don't just keep it to yourself. If you don't want to tell nobody else, at least for, for goodness sake, tell the devil. Let him know what his end is. Let him know that you've beat cancer. Let him know that you've been saved. Let him know that you've been deli- delivered of, of spirits and whatever. He's the one that gave them to you. So let him know. I'm not taking them. You know, Brother Donnie, Jesus re- referenced so many times about the box of rattlesnakes. Send it back. But write him a big note on top of there when you send it back. Let him know. This ain't mine. It's yours. Take it back to hell. Amen? Can we sing that song? But Louie, you going to sing or somebody else going to sing? What a wonderful name it is. That's the name that all men will be saved. Brother Joel, come up here. I'll let you sing. Brother Dewey, Louie don't look like he wants to. <laughs> Everybody else does it that way. <laughs> we, we sing that song, What a Wonderful Name It Is. Let your life speak that name when you get up in the morning. That would be your number one goal. Don't be like me. Nobody talks to me in the morning because I don't talk to anybody in the morning. I might say a few words to the devil, but I don't talk to Austin, Michael, and Jennifer until about 10 o'clock when I've had coffee. (laughs) She calls me a grouch, but I'm working on it. Let's worship him this morning. You were you what is that? What a wonderful name it is. What a name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. You were the Word in the beginning, the one with God, the Lord was high. You're hid in glory in creation. Now revealed in you I cry. What a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name. 
Enjoy Brother Joe this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So good. Appreciate that. It's every bit the truth, too, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Amen. He's talking about Michael making fun or mimicking everything that that he did. Actually, it was at your wedding, you and, you and Sister Jennifer's wedding. They asked me to sing a song. And, uh, I did, but me and the piano player had trouble getting together. And my son, the first words that come out of his mouth when I got home, he said, I heard you messed up on your song. So I know how you feel, Joe. <laughs> and come to think of it, that's the last wedding I ever sung at. <laughs> so it must have been a doozy. But anyway, we are what we are, aren't we? By the grace of God, we're going to get out of this old pest house. We carry a dead man around. We drag him everywhere we go. We we take care of him. We comb what hairs he's got left. We clean him up as good as we can. But we're going to be delivered into a brand new body. Aren't you looking forward to it? The highlight of our life will be the coming of the Lord. Amen. Brother Joel, let's sing that little, a little of that song. If anybody asks you where we're going. This is the earliest you've got out here in a long, long time. So let's sing just another song or so and you can be dismissed. Appreciate all of our visitors being with us in the service today. Sister Caitlin Andrews and her family is is here and I asked her to give us a song but she said next time. So next time we'll, we'll look forward to hearing her sing. But uh, let's sing this with Brother Joel this morning. If anybody asks you don't really have, like Brother Joe said, you don't really have to say a lot. Just live right in front of them. They'll read it. They'll get the message, won't they? Amen. Praise the Lord. If anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going, if you want to know Tell them for me 
ask you where I'm going, where I'm going one day soon. Now, if you want to know. I'm going in the rapture, I'm going in the rapture, I'm going in the rapture to be with my Lord. Now I can take the pain, the heartache that it brings, I have comfort in knowing. I'll soon be gone. How about you? As God gives me grace to run this Christian race until I see my Savior. can take the pain, the heartache that life is sure to bring. I have comfort knowing one day I will soon be gone. God is going to give me grace to run, to fight, to stay in this race till I see my Savior. night, Lord willing, we'll be back here again, 7 o'clock, you're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Be friendly before you leave, tell somebody you love them, you're glad to be in church with them today. Sing a little bit more. I can take the pain, the heartache that it brings, I have comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. me grace I'll run this Christian race until I see my Savior face to face I'm going up yonder I'm going